I've been talking about making this resistive speed control for one of my boats. And it's uh, basically a thing where you got the batteries and the motor and wires connect them. And then you just put different size resistors in the way to slow down the electricity to the motor. And that's how you do your speed control. And some of the energy gets wasted. And people are pointing this out to me a lot, um, that it's wasting so much energy. But it's not as bad as you think. And I'm going to show you some math in a second. First, I'm going to show you my resistive speed control. Isn't that awesome? That's it. That's the whole speed control. It replaces so much stuff. Like this is, I think this piece of wire, this is nichrome wire, costs like, I think it was like around $10. It replaces like a five or six, six hundred dollar other thing. Oh, it's real. Anyway, let me show you why it's not as bad as you think. Say you've got a battery here, right? And then you've got a motor here. And let's say it's a 100 watt motor. And when you connect the battery directly to the motor, it runs at 100 watts. Now, say if I want to run the motor at 50 watts, I stick a, a big fat resistor in here to slow down the electricity. A lot of people are under the impression that 50 watts are being thrown away, wasted on the resistor. Uh, so you're only getting half the energy and you're wasting the other half. However, let's, let's just check the math on that. All right, we've got our battery here. Now let's make the numbers really simple so this is easy to do. Let's make this a 10 volt battery. And over here, we've got a motor that's 100 watts. So you connect it direct, there will be 10 amps going through here because 10 volts times 10 amps equals 100 watts, which makes the resistance on this motor one ohm. And that one ohm is gonna make the math really easy for this. And the reason, <laughs> the way you know this is one ohm is because, um, let's see, voltage equals current times resistance. So the resistance equals, let's throw that down there, equals voltage over current. So the voltage, 10, divided by 10 equals 1. So the resistance on this motor is 1. So let's say we want to run the motor at uh, 50 watts. Our battery is still 10 volts. Now somehow we have to figure out how to slow down the electricity so only half as much is going in here. Now uh, let's connect our one wire, that's going to be the same. And this wire, we're going to throw a resistor in here that's going to slow down the electricity. And it slows down the electricity by throwing away part of the voltage. And to get 50 watts, we know the voltage and the current's going to be the same because the current is one. I mean, uh, the resistance is one. So I'm not going to be able to get exact, but like 7 times 7 equals 49. That's close enough to 50, so let's go with 7 volts, 7 amps. Okay, so we need seven amps running through this whole circuit. And we want seven volts to be hitting the motor. That means we have to waste three volts over here. So we make this resistor three-sevenths of what this resistance is. So since this is one, this ends up being three-sevenths of an ohm, which is not important at the moment, but whatever. Okay. So how much energy is actually being wasted by this resistor? Well, let's see how much, oh wait, we know 50 is going into the motor, right? Let's see how much is coming out of the battery. We know that the, the voltage is still 10, 10 volts, and the amperage is seven times seven amps equals 70 watts. So only 70 watts are coming out of the motor and uh, 50 are making it to the motor. That means we're wasting 20 watts. We're not wasting 50 watts. We're only wasting 20. Well, it ends up being like 21 or whatever. But this is just rough numbers to give you, to give you a rough idea. So technically, this would be 49 watts, and you'd be wasting 21 if I'm right. Uh, so let's, let's do another one. So this is a lot better than, than wasting 50 watts. All right, let's do another one here. Uh, let's say we've got our 10 volt battery still and we've still got our 100 watt motor that we want to run at 80 watts. 
Okay, I'm picking 80 because 9 times 9 equals 81, which is close enough. So we're just going to call that 80. So technically this is 81, whatever. So we connect that, and then we connect this through a resistor that's going to waste 1 volt. So that 9 volts make it to the motor. 9 volts, um, since the resistance on this motor is still 1, 9 volts is going to have 9 amps going through. And <clears throat> so 10 volts, oh, oh, let's just check what's coming out of the battery. 10 volts times 9 amps is 90 watts coming out of the battery and 80, well technically 81, are making it to the motor. So we're not wasting 20. All right, let me just make this actually 81. Okay, we're not wasting 19, we're wasting nine. So, so we're wasting nine, nine watts to get the 80 watt speed control. So uh, yeah, you're not actually, when you, when you use a resistive speed control to reduce your 100 watts to these others, you're not actually wasting 50, 50 watts to get down to 50 watts. You're only wasting 20, 21 to get to 49, whatever. And you know, to get down to 80, you're not wasting 20, you're only wasting nine. -ish. Okay, so there is another reason I really like this speed resistive, resistive speed control. Actually, two other reasons. One, I, I kind of already mentioned that it's, this costs $10 and it replaces like a $600 thing. It's also super simple. And uh, here's the thing it replaces. This complicated piece of electronic stuff and it's got like a solenoid you have to have with it. And it's just all this cr extra crap you have to have. It's got a, ah, it doesn't matter. This is like a pretty expensive speed control. So it's expensive. It's, uh, you know, hard to repair. If it, if it breaks, I basically can't repair it. Okay, so that's, this, that's the second reason I like this resistive thing. The third reason has to do with overall efficiency. Now this bit of reasoning is a vehicle specific thing. This is the boat that I'm using it with, and this boat only goes like 10 miles an hour top speed. So almost always I'm gonna be driving full speed. So the only, the only two circumstances I can really think that I'll use the slower speed controls or the slower speeds is when I'm starting the motor. So instead of just jamming it into full speed, I'll go uh, first speed, second speed, go full speed. So it's like a second, right? Uh, the other time is maybe if I'm parking at a dock and I, I need to come in slow. So for a few seconds, I'll run the motor slow. Other than that, if I'm driving, I'm just going full speed. So like 99% of the time, I'll be driving full speed. Now this fancy speed control thing, this is a very nice speed controller, works great and everything. It boasts uh, something like 98% efficiency or, or something. I don't remember what the efficiency is, but it's, it's pretty high, high efficiency. That means if I wanna run the motor at 50 watts, I'm only gonna be wasting a couple watts, not 20, right? So the, the, the lower speeds on the other speed controller are definitely more efficient, however, if I'm running full speed, that other speed controller is still going to be using some energy. It's going to be wasting some energy. However, with the, with the resistive speed control, I just bypass the resistor completely, connect direct. This is more efficient than the fancy $600 super electronic mega speed control. And if I'm going to be running full speed 99% of the time, the resistive speed control is going to be more efficient overall. It's going to be more efficient, more robust, cheaper. Everything about it is great. And, you know, after I start using it, I may eat my words. But on paper, it's all looking great. And the funny thing is, I originally wanted to do this because it was cheap and simple. But then once I started doing the math on it, I realized how good this actually is. It is it's really, really good. Particularly if you're driving full speed most of the time. And with any luck, Three months from now, I will not be making a video saying, oh, I was wrong. <laughs>